Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrosch, and this is the last episode for 2017. Today's episode is episode 59, and it's going back to World War II. What I'm going to do is we're going to take a break from World War II after the next episode and uh, visit. Uh, I'm going to do a little stream of uh, other uh, combat zones, and we'll we'll just take a little break from World War II. We'll come back. Trust me, there are hundreds of citations from World War II. And uh, today's episode, the final episode for 2017, is being brought to you by the Bearded Detailer. Visit thebeardeddetailer.com for all of your automotive detailing solutions and be sure to use the promo code TOH10. And that's going to get you 10% off your order. And uh, just so you know, all orders that use that promo code, 75% of the profits will be donated to the Congressional Medal of Honor Society. The Bearded Detailer, where your dirt is his business. And now, a tale of honor. John R. Fox was born on the 18th of May, 1915, in Cincinnati, Ohio. He went on to attend Wilberforce University, an all-African-American school, where he participated in ROTC. When John graduated, he was commissioned as a second lieutenant, and after moving to Massachusetts with his wife, John joined the U.S. Army and attended infantry school at Fort Benning, Georgia. Three years later, John's actions as a first lieutenant in Italy would earn him the Distinguished Service Cross. The citation reads, For extraordinary heroism against an armed enemy in the vicinity of Somo Colonia, Italy, on December 26, 1944, while serving as a member of Cannon Company, 366th Infantry Regiment, 92nd Infantry Division. During the preceding few weeks, Lieutenant Fox served with the 598th Field Artillery Battalion as a forward observer. On Christmas night, Enemy soldiers gradually infiltrated the town of Somo Colonia in civilian clothes, and by early morning, the town was largely in hostile hands. Commencing with a heavy barrage of enemy artillery at 0400 hours on December 26, 1944, an organized attack by uniformed German units began. Being greatly outnumbered, most of the United States infantry forces were forced to withdraw from the town, but Lieutenant Fox and some other members of his observer party voluntarily remained on the second floor of a house to direct defensive artillery fire. At 0800 hours, Lieutenant Fox reported that the Germans were in the streets and attacking in strength. He then called for a defensive artillery fire to slow the enemy advance. As the Germans continued to press the attack towards the area that Lieutenant Fox occupied, he adjusted the artillery fire closer to his position. Finally, he was warned that the next adjustment would bring the deadly artillery right on top of his position. After acknowledging the danger, Lieutenant Fox insisted that the last adjustment be fired as this was the only way to defeat the attacking enemy soldiers. Later, when a counterattack retook the position from the Germans, Lieutenant Fox's body was found with the bodies of approximately 100 German soldiers. Lieutenant Fox's gallant and courageous actions at the supreme sacrifice of his own life contributed greatly to delaying the enemy advance until other infantry and artillery units could reorganize to repel the attack. His extraordinary valorous actions were in keeping with the most cherished traditions of military service and reflect the utmost credit on him, his unit, and the United States Army. Now, you did hear correctly. John earned the Distinguished Service Cross for these actions. However, this award was not posthumously given to him until 1982, yes, 38 years after his actions. During World War II, many awards were overlooked because of race, and once a team from Shaw University in North Carolina was commissioned by the U.S. Army to conduct research as to whether or not African-American troops had been unfairly denied the Medal of Honor, it was only then that it was concluded that ten were to be recommended for their actions. John was one of the ten that were recommended, and of those ten, seven were chosen, and six were posthumously awarded by President Clinton in January of 1997. In 2005, Hasbro made a 12-inch action figure of John for their G.I. Joe Medal of Honor series, along with James Doolittle and Audi Murphy. John R. Fox is buried in the Colebrook Cemetery in Whitman, Massachusetts.
And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to leave a nice review, a good rating, and tell a friend. And I want you all to have a safe and happy new year. And I want to thank you all for making this podcast the success it has turned out to be. 2017 has been great, and I look forward to the growth that we can have in 2017. There are still many, 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 many more stories to get through, and we're going to get through them all. You can see more information on Facebook, Instagram, and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any more questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening. Happy New Year.